Today is going to be extra awesome, not only because it's a new fan showdown, but because some of the fans we're going to look at today are fans that previously I couldn't print them. What I mean is like when I go through you guys' designs that you submit to me, um, sometimes I run across a design that intrigues me. So beautiful but it's not something that I can print. Mostly because there's like really small features or areas, mostly areas that require support material that I just can't remove after it's printed. But I'm happy to say those are problems of the past, thanks to QIDI. Now QIDI didn't sponsor this video, but they did send over one of their printers for me to look at, and it's going to fundamentally change what we can do on the channel moving forward, and I'm super excited about it. The printer I'm talking about is the QIDI iFast. The iFast is an industrial grade printer with a print area of 330 by 250 by 320. And that's with the dual extruders installed there. It gets slightly larger if you put the single extruder on there. That's 360 by 250 by 320. And the single extruder is a high temperature Ruby extruder. In addition to that, the printer is now fully enclosed with a heated chamber. So we can use all other crazy material that I couldn't before. And it comes with every normal high-end expectation you would have for a printer of its quality. It's got a heated build plate, connectivity to the internet. Uh, integrated camera so you can monitor your prints while they're going without, I guess, walking over there. A five inch touchscreen. And each of the extruders has filament brake sensors, so that's pretty awesome as well. It ships with the QIDI print slicer um, with, a, with an iFast profile already installed. And I've been using it for a while, doing some test prints, all these fans, and it's been working perfectly. It's also compatible with Cura and Simplified 3D. And then when you get the printer, you also get a Simplified 3D profile that you can you know, install or upload if that's something you wanna use. The only downside of this printer, if you wanna pick one up, it's, 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 it's really expensive. It's like 2,500 US dollars right now. Now QIDI does have some cheaper printers. And if they're anything like the iFast, my experience has been pretty positive. So it's worth checking out. But like I said, QIDI isn't sponsoring this video. I just wanna let you know that if you were thinking about designing a fan, but you weren't sure if it'd be something that I could print, Rest assured, because no matter what you come up with now, I can print it. Now that's because the feature that I'm most excited about is the dual extruder. I've been looking for a printer like this for a long time. I'm really happy they sent one over. And that's because we can now print with support material that's PVA. And what's so great about PVA is that it prints at a simpler temp similar temperature to PLA and it dissolves in water. So I can print out whatever crazy design you guys sent me, throw it in a bucket of water and uh, the next day, it's perfect. There's no support material. It's just amazing. Bucket, water, magic. Now, before we get into all the, the crazy geometry stuff, let's talk about a fan that I could have printed before the iFast, but I printed it anyway in this group of fans because I just found it super fascinating. This is the Pran Doll fan. I think I'm pronouncing that right. And it's created by Austin, and the design is based on a 1932 paper written by aerodynamicist Ludwig Prandtl. Now, there's a lot of math and research that goes into this concept. So I'll just leave a link in the description below to a presentation presented by Al Bowers, who explains all this in great detail if you're interested to, to learn more from somebody that actually knows what they're talking about. But I'll give, you a, I'll give you my take on it. Let's start by talking about propellers. When you hear, when you listen to an aircraft propeller, most of the noise that you hear comes from the tips. One of the, the loudest propeller driven aircraft actually still flying today is the TU-95 Bear, but maybe the loudest aircraft ever built was one called the XF-84 Thunder Screech. Now, although these planes, they look nothing alike, they were designed for very different roles, they share one thing in common, and that is that the propeller tips on both of these aircraft travel faster than the speed of sound, which generates an absurd amount of noise. In the case of the Thunder Screech, the outer 61 to 76 centimeters of the blade traveled faster than the speed of sound, producing a continuous, visible sonic boom, which during ground operations, supposedly you could hear it 25 miles away. Now these blade tips produce all this noise because they're heavily loaded and when they reach the speed of sound, they build up a shock wave. And in order to combat this, you either have to do one of two things. One, reduce the rotational speed, which is what most aircraft with propellers do, to a subsonic tip speed, or you remove the load from the tips. And that's where Prandol comes in. If you twist the blade so that the load at the tips is reduced to almost nothing or nothing if you're awesome, you get a much quieter propeller. And this was actually studied by NASA to reduce server noise on the ISS. And according to Al's presentation, the, the fan that they tested was called the Prandol fan. And their study found that the same at the same voltage and diameter, they observed a 24% increase in flow and an 88% reduction in noise. Oh my God. I just gave you guys 
the secret to designing the world's quietest fan. So there you go. Go out, make millions on quiet PC fans. Now in Austin's fan, you can see that he's twisted the blade tips at the end to try to take advantage of this uh, theory and hopefully creating a very, very quiet fan. But my question to you, does your brain hurt? Yes. Because yes, I, I hope it doesn't because there's another good one coming up. One that I've wanted to print for a very long time, but I wasn't able to print it as one piece until now. Oh, this is the Tesla valve. It was created by Tev, who I might add is an actual scientist who works at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Ever heard of it? So if anybody's gonna figure out like the, the whole Berdahl thing, it's probably gonna be Tev. So maybe in the future we'll see another design from Tev where he explores that concept. But today we have the Tesla valve. Now this fan, it gets its design and name from the one-way valve created by Nikola Tesla. The Tesla valve is a one-way valve that operates with no moving parts. And there's another great video on YouTube about this. If you wanna check it out, I'll leave a link to that one as well down below. It'll tell you everything you need to know about it. But the long and short of it is, due to the geometry of the valve, it allows fluid to flow through it very easily in one direction. But if you reverse the direction, it's met with really high resistance. And this geometry is what Tev is aiming for in the creation of this fan. The gaps between these fan blades have the Tesla valve geometry. And the idea here is that Tev is hoping that the air is gonna flow through the blades. And because of the geometry of the blades, it's not gonna wanna let the air flow backwards. If this works, you could have a fan with exceptionally high static pressure. And I'm, I'm gonna be honest, when I first saw this design, which was oh, quite a while ago, I was like, yes, I also must know this answer. But again, couldn't print it. I, I, I tried, I tried to print this um, as one piece, but getting in between all the blades, remove the sport material was impossible. It's really kind of hard to see it through the camera, but if we look at the 3D model, you can really start to see all these tiny little overhangs that, that just don't release that support material. But here we go, we got it now, we're gonna let it rip. But before that, we got, <laughs> we got, another, got another banana design made possible by the iFast, and uh, this is the cheese grater, and it was created by Joseph. Now, when it comes to backstory and all that good stuff, Joseph said, I, I got nothing. I, I, he made it because it might be loud, but other than that, he just, just wanted to have a good time, I guess. But me, I took one look at this thing and I was like, ah, yes, I also want to see how said fan performs. I've seen fans with holes in them before. I think I've actually, yeah, I've made fans with holes in them, but I've never seen a fan with like these little finger things sticking off the back in addition to holes. And I was like, what do those do? Do those... Do those improve anything or are they just there for looks? Do they make things worse? We gotta find out, it's just weird. Kinda like this next one. This next fan is called the Whisk and it was designed by Simon who said yesterday, this is, this is what he said to me. He said, yesterday I was making a milkshake and while doing so, I was using a hand blender and I was astonished at how much upward force I was getting from the, the hand blender. So I thought immediately of the fan showdown, boom, here you go. And I think that's a perfect representation of what this is all about. You're just like asking yourself, what if? And it's, it's, it goes all the way from high, high level aerodynamics to ingenious valve designs, all the way down to a hand blender. If you can like think it and design it, I'll print it out and test it. So we're gonna start by looking at the noise. The Prindall came in at 44.6. The cheese grater came in at 43.2. The Tesla valve came in at 43.9. And the whisk came in at 48.5. And what I found most surprising is, yes, the Perdell fan was, it was very quiet, but the cheese grater measured lower. <laughs> I don't know, what does that mean? Now, maybe my, maybe it's, maybe it's time to get a better decibel meter, um, something more precise. I would really like to get a decibel meter with like a, I don't even know if they make them, like a built-in spectrum analyzer, anal, analyzer? Nailed it. Debatable. So if you know of one, you know of a DB meter or yeah, DB meter with like a spectrum analyzer combo, let me know in the comments, looking to buy. But on to the smoke test. On the smoke test, of course, we are gonna be looking at the Tesla valve first. And what I found Interesting almost immediately was that the air is, yes, being drawn in as you would expect, but if you look at the edge of the fan, every now and then you see a little puff of air kind of, kind of spit out. When we look at the side, the valve design seems to be functioning as we'd expect, but again, the ring around the outside, there's just a little bit of turbulence. 
Now looking at the fan design and guessing, I guess, um, the tips or the edges of the fan where the, on the outside here, on the outside ring, that's where they overlap the least. So maybe that is the root cause for what's going on here. That, that air is given a little opportunity right there at the edge to kind of just poof out and that's, that's what's happening. I don't know, what do you think? Onto the Prendel. So the Prendel seems to be performing exceptionally. Almost all the air flowing towards the fan is gobbled up and accelerated out the back. So far, this one's looking, to me at least, like the best performing fan. I guess we've only looked at one other one, but it's looking good. Looking at the side, it's clear to see that the air is being handled very well. It's being drawn in and accelerated out the back, and we got a reasonably tight flow out the back of this fan. Things get a little more squirrely with the cheese grater. Yeah, the air is still being drawn in and accelerated like you'd expect, but doesn't seem to be doing so very efficiently. And when we look at the side of the fan, that tight flow that the, the Prindol had, it's all gone. This, this fan produces air, or throws air out in a very wide, wide cone. And things, the things just get worse from there. This, the whisk just looks like mass chaos. From the front, it seems like there's little to no air being accelerated out the back. Looking at the side, we can see that some air is actually making it through, but mostly just chaotic randomness is, is afoot. But the weirdest thing is watch this very first puff of air or puff of smoke come in. As it passes through the fan, you get this really strange, crazy looking flow pattern out the back. It doesn't instill confidence in cooling performance, but it just looks really cool. Speaking of cooling performance, the Prandol came in with an average temperature of 80.1 at a room temperature of 21, giving us a delta of 59.1. The cheese grater came in with an average temperature of 81.6 at a room temperature of 21, giving us a delta of 60.6. The Tesla valve came in with an average temperature of 85.6 at a room temperature of 21, giving us a delta of 64.6. And the whisk, well, <laughs> The whisk got a big DNF. Unfortunately, it didn't move enough air to keep the system from thermally throttling, so yeah, didn't work. Placing the Prindol in first, the cheese grater in second, the Tesla valve in third, and the whisk in fourth. Now, overall this week, there was no, there was no movement on the board. However, this week, this video, this fan showdown marks a milestone on the channel because from here on out, there's no limit on what you can what you can design. You can go all ham on it. But thank you guys for watching. If you want to get involved in the Fan Showdown, I'll leave all the information you need down below. You send all of your SDL files to thefanshowdown at gmail.com. Uh, you want to follow me on Twitter? Send me a picture of a fan you made. Go ahead and do that. Like the video. Subscribe. We'll see you next time.